months of training deserves the cheering. More than 100 paddlers are participating in the second year of Bay Paddle, traveling the entire length of the bay. Yeah. That's more than 200 miles from Havre de Grace down to Cape Charles and out to the Atlantic Ocean in eight days. Well, it keeps the doctor away, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you have things to shoot for and you stay in shape for them, it uh, kind of keeps you moving along the way. You guys have a good ride. Mark right. McCullough is doing the entire race while others are on a relay team. But he has friends and family jumping in the second seat of his two-man outrigger canoe. It's like good having, you know, a teammate here. We're kind of chatting up, having some fun. Um, and conditions today are great, so we're having a great time. Day one down to Rock Hall was tough with the heat and paddling against the tide for 33 miles. Day two, a shorter stretch. We caught up with participants as they took a break at Red Eyes Dock Bar in Kent Narrows. I have four liters of electrolytes, water bottles, just to kind of keep myself cool. We all are equipped with VHF radios. And I have some snacks um, to keep me uh, fueled. And they have the watchful eyes of Towboat US Kent Narrows, an event sponsor providing safety from the start to the finish. We're just making to look sure that everybody seems hydrated, that there's no distressed paddler that might be having their arms in the air. If they need to take a break, they're they're happy to come up and we can hold onto their kayak, they can hop into our boat. This year, the founder of Bay Paddle is on land. How are the conditions? Chris Hopkinson, who captured nationwide attention when he became the first person to travel the entire bay on a stand-up paddleboard, all to raise money for oyster recovery, has big plans for the event. One year is not enough to do everything that, that we want to do to help protect the bay and put more oysters in the bay, so there was that. I wanted to continue to do the fundraising. I also think it was just such a unique experience for me, seeing the bay that way, paddling the entire length. Um, connecting to the bay the way that, that I did during my paddle, it just brought almost more appreciation for how beautiful and spectacular it is. And, and I think we have a huge responsibility to, to take care of it. So I wanted to, to continue it, to build a community around it. And it's not just for bragging rights. Bay Paddle will support Chesapeake Conservancy and for a second year, Oyster Recovery Partnership. The money from Bay Paddle from 2020 was used to put uh, additional oysters in, in the bay. The Chesapeake Conservancy, you know, they're really, were, they're really interested in trying to make sure that people understand the bay, have access to the bay, can recreate and use the bay. And, and we're, we're sort of the ground up type of approach where we're putting those animals that help the bay on the bottom, let them bring a, you know, create a healthy bay so that way it can sort of sustain you know, our use and interest in the bay for, you know, for years to come. Paddlers raised more than $100,000 by the start of the race, and the money keeps coming in. The leaders of ORP and Chesapeake Conservancy are also on the water. So check this out. There were 12 dolphins swimming around me. We're going to put it towards an effort to create a national recreation area. Now, this, this is a, a, a type of national park, a land-based park, that will celebrate the Chesapeake as a national, a national treasure. A spotlight on the bay as the test of endurance is matched against the beauty of the unknown. They're really putting themselves out there every day in terrible conditions, paddling for hours at a time just to make the bay a better place. And all we have to do is donate. There's time to do so as the event wraps up on September 3rd. Chesapeake Bay Media is a proud media sponsor. For Bay Bulletin, I'm Cheryl Costello.